that 70s Heron, Heron pressed on. Welcome into the Nickel City Crew. I am your host, Rob Crippen. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Nickel City Crew. You can also find our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. I'm thankful you're choosing us for some of your Buffalo Bills and NFL content again today. This episode is presented by Crippen Legacy Entertainment here on Spreaker. And as always, these are my Bills thoughts said out loud. Let's get straight to it. Happy Friday to... Bills Nation, Bills Mafia, the Nickel City crew. Von Miller is a Buffalo Bill. Holy crap. <laughs> Let that sink in for a quick moment, Bills Mafia. Von Miller is a Buffalo Bill. Uh, my mind went to two places immediately after the announcement on Thursday night. Uh, my nephew had sent me a, an Instagram post from Von Miller, and I didn't believe it was real. And after I got a chance to verify that and made sure that, uh, that it wasn't any type of fake news or fake reporting, uh, my mind went to two places. About the Bills going forward, uh, I'll get to that in a moment where my mind went, but I couldn't help but reflect back to the Bills and and back to the Bills 10 years ago. We all remember when we signed Mario Williams to the big contract. Uh, At the time, he was a $100 million man, and it was a totally different feeling with the Bills back then. After this uh, Von Miller signing, it's just really, really, really difficult to believe that this is my reality and our reality as Bills fans. He chose us. He chose to come to us. He wanted to be a Buffalo Bill. Totally different than 10 years ago when we made, at that time, the biggest free agent signing uh, in some time for the Bills. You remember with Mario Williams, it was almost that kind of, you know, gun to the head mentality, for lack of a better term. It was, you know, don't let this man get back to the airport. We can't let him leave. We've got to lock the doors. We've got to get this deal hammered out. And Mario was productive, and he had a great career with the Bills and definitely did some things on the football field getting to the quarterback that was worthy of the big contract that he got, but it was a totally different feeling back then. The team still didn't have much success. We definitely didn't have any credibility at the time. We were in the midst of that drought, and it was just different with the news and the way that it came down uh, the other night with Von Miller. This isn't 10 years ago, Buffalo Bills fans. Bills Mafia, Nickel City Crew. This is not 10 years ago. Von chose us. How sweet of a feeling is that? He said he wanted to be a part of something special in his introductory press conference yesterday at One Bills Drive. That was really cool to hear. I know I'm real critical of Sean McDermott and some of the decisions that he makes on game day and how he leads the team sometimes in those rough situations. But one thing you can't dispute, he he is respected. Um, I've got to give my hats off to him, and I'm going to talk about Miranda Bean at length a little bit as well uh, coming up. But People like to play for Sean McDermott. They like the culture, quote-unquote, that he's built in Buffalo. It's real. It's palpable. Uh, When I heard Von Miller and then you hear some of the other free agents yesterday, I know, I think it was Tim Settle yelled woo or said let out of Ric Flair woo or might have been uh, Jordan Phillips who's coming back, who also another uh, guy who had left the organization and now wants to be back. Um, It's kind of eerie to feel like this is our team. It's a new reality to live in as a Buffalo Bills fan. I know for me in particular, uh, that drought was really tough to go through and to endure and all the jokes and all the people that are sniding your team and making comments and different things like that. We're no longer the butt of jokes. Bills are no longer a second class organization. They're now becoming a model organization, something that other GMs and other uh, owners are looking to emulate. Um, This is really special. I'll be honest with you. It's hard to put into words because of the fact that what Von Miller's status is in the league now, obviously he's going to be a future Hall of Famer, probably first ballot. He's going to, you know, moonwalk into the Hall of Fame. And he's really, really elevated the the cachet of the Buffalo Bills. I like to call it the Josh Allen effect when I know a lot of people refer to that as well. But that's why I had to mention McDermott as well, even though I'm one of his toughest critics. I think it also speaks to McDermott and the way that he runs his ship. Um, It's also the McDermott effect. He has changed the culture of the Buffalo Bills. They are not a laughing stock anymore. They are not somebody that uh, free agents don't want to ever be caught. Uh, It's not a situation where we've got to lock the doors like Mario Williams 10 years ago. This is really cool, and it's really special, and it's it's awesome that he used that, that wording yesterday in his press conference about how he wanted to be part of something special here in Buffalo. Um, That really resonated with me because it hasn't always been like that for us. We usually have to overpay for free agents or we don't get the best of the free agents. We've got to make sure that we get 
you know, the second tier guys or whatever the case may be. And we've got to overcompensate and overspend. That's no longer the case. Now, Von Miller, one thing that's going forward for this team, he instantly changes everything about the defense. We have been dying for that edge rusher that can get to the quarterback. That is somebody that offensive coordinators have to game plan for. We haven't had that. And when I saw Camille, Khalil Mack, excuse me, go to the Chargers and, uh, and then we were trying to get Chandler Jones and then he goes to the Raiders, I was starting to get worried again because we've got some young guys in the defensive end room that haven't really proven much. And we spent a lot of draft uh, assets, Brandon Bean has, on trying to get that pass rush and manufacture uh, sacks and pressures and get to Patrick Mahomes and some of those other quarterbacks when it, when it comes crunch time at the end of the year. I think that we could settle that right now. Von Miller is that presence for this Buffalo Bills defense. Now, he's not going to have 15 sacks or 18 sacks in a year, and he, he quite frankly doesn't have to. I'd like to give him those best, you know, veteran rest days off, excuse me, and allow him to sit and stay fresh throughout the season. You don't have to overwork him. He's almost like a hired gun. He's like a specialist. Now, it's an expensive hired gun to have, but, hey, it's not our money. I don't care. <laughs> Bills fans, we don't have anything to worry about with that. Brandon Bean's job is to massage the salary cap and to make sure that all the pieces fit under the cap. That's not our concern. Yes, he's an expensive hired gun, but I think that he's productive. And I still think that he's got plenty of good years left in him. This is a big addition for the defensive line in particular, okay? We've got Ed Oliver coming off of his best year as a pro. He'll be playing this year under the fifth year rookie option. You know he's going to be playing with his hair on fire. You know that he wants another extension. His first extension as a pro outside of his rookie deal. You know he's wanting it. And Von Miller can help with that in the immediate future for Ed Oliver. You go across the defensive line, and I also think that Von Miller can also help out the other defensive ends. We're talking about the A.J. Esp Espinezas of the world, Greg Rousseau's, the Boogie Bashams, those guys that are in rotation that are going to be filling in for, uh, you know, the loss of Jerry Hughes if he doesn't come back and some of the other moves as well. I think that Von Miller can help. He's a technician. I think he literally holds a defensive and pass rushing camp each summer in recent years. You know how you've heard of, you know, George Kittle with tight end you. Von Miller was always already doing that with the pass rushers, offering and, and kind of paying it forward and paying his skills and his knowledge forward to the game and giving it to the, some of the younger defensive ends across the league, the other pass rushers. I think he's going to be key in the locker room. I think he'll be key on the field. And I can't be more excited for what's coming up for the Bills. Uh, I know that this guy, I, I, I don't know, but I, I do feel in my heart that he's got some, some juice left in the tank. Now, he won't see the end of this contract when you see the numbers come out in six years and 100 million plus. He's obviously probably not going to see the end of that deal. But in my opinion, he can give us every bit of a good three-year run, including this coming up 2022 season. Pass rushers have had a history in this league of being productive later into their careers. I know he's a little bit long in the tooth, but we have examples of pass rushers over the age of 30, even 32, 33 years old, that have still had production. Reggie White comes to mind, you know, Dwight Freeney and Terrell Suggs, Julius Peppers, among others. I heard about them mentioned on WGR, and it was a great point. Those guys were a little bit longer in the tooth as well, but gave you big production later in their careers. Now, hats off to Brandon Bean. I'll be honest, as much as I'm critical of Sean McDermott, I have the opposite feelings about Brandon Bean, to be honest. I have complete faith, complete confidence. I think he's showing us again why he's one of the best GMs in the league. He's savvy. He understands value, which is extremely important. It might be the number one trait for a general manager to have, is to be able to understand value. He isn't afraid to take big, calculated swings. Okay, he's not reckless. I wouldn't consider him reckless. I don't. He's not trading up for Sammy Watkins. He's not doing some of those other crazy moves, drafting running backs high now. When we know that that is a mistake to do that in the first round. He's not reckless, but he's also not afraid. He'll he'll go on the fly. He'll he'll make adjustments. We got the J.D. McKissick thing, which was kind of you know I don't know. Some people could describe it as embarrassing. I know for at least for one thing, it was probably information that they didn't want out there. 
he get, agrees to the deal and then he turns around goes back to the commanders goes back to washington and kind of uh, puts egg on the face of the bills because all their business is kind of out in the street so to speak but brandon bean didn't skip a beat he quickly changed course and he went big game hunting what a prize he just got to for the bills what what a prize if he was big game hunting, what a prize he brought home. Former Super Bowl MVP. He's coming off a great year in which he won another Super Bowl. He was integral in that championship run through the playoffs, coming up with timely plays. I remember the Bucks game. He, you know, He's the one that sacks Brady. Super Bowl, he was right there towards the end of the game as well. And that's what I really want to see from Von Miller for this Buffalo Bills team. Like I said, for the next few years, two or three years, maybe four if we're lucky. It's for him to be spaced out, fresh for the playoffs, not run down, not haggard by the time the real games come up. This Buffalo Bills team is talented. A-plus to the Brandon Bean and his staff for the way that they've generated this roster, made moves. It's interesting to see how before this trade, Vegas already had the Bills as the favorites to win the AFC. I think they were right there neck and neck or tied with Kansas City. Are we the team to beat now in the AFC after this trade? It's hard to make arguments against it. And Brandon Bean and his staff have kind of engineered free agency the same way that he's engineered this roster his entire tenure. Smart, efficient, making sure that he's making the right decisions, taking swings when he needs to. You bring in Von Miller. Resign Isaiah McKenzie. Jordan Phillips wants to come back. Shaq Lawson wants to come back. You add a couple rotational defensive tackles, which was sorely needed across the defensive line. And Tim Suttle and Daquan Jones. You address offensive guard, which was obviously a revolving door on the left side last year by bringing in Roger Saffold. You get a tight end too. You bring in O.J. Howard to pair with Dawson Knox. The Bills are sitting pretty pretty heading into the draft. This is a good shape is good shape to be in. I'm excited. I keep stuttering because I'm so excited. I can't believe Von Miller chose to be a Buffalo Bill after coming off of a Super Bowl run with the Rams. I figured he'd go back to the Rams or at worst he would go back to Denver where he obviously carved out his entire career. So hats off again to Brandon Bean and his staff. I think they're real sharp. Now my first thought immediately after the signing Going forward for the Bills, after I thought about Mario Williams in the past, going forward, my immediate thought, I heard Jeremy White say it uh, the other day on WGR, and he stole my thunder. I didn't get a chance to get the podcast recorded yesterday. I thought about drafting Jamison Williams. He said wide receiver. I was specifically thinking about Jamison Williams. And here's my here's my pitch. Willis McGahee 2.0. We do have the luxury of time here in Buffalo coming up in this 2022 season. I know there's lots of fans of Isaiah Hodgins out there, Kumaro, maybe Marquez Stevenson. Now you've got Knox and Howard, so you've got two tight ends to pair together in some 12 personnel sets. Still have motor in the backfield. I think we can afford, uh, afford to gamble a little bit and get Jamison, uh, Jamison Williams. Of course, he had a devastating injury in the national championship game. He's going to be out a while, maybe October, November, depending on how he heals. I feel the Bills can sustain a draft pick like that. I think they can sustain having to wait for someone like that. You always want talent. You always want the cream of the crop when it comes to the draft. If you've got good development and you've got good coaches, you can develop players that might be a little bit raw around the edges or may not be as refined. But talent speaks. Speed kills in the NFL as well. And this guy, Jamison Williams, has it in spades. So as we go forward to the draft, that's what I'm going to be looking for. I think Von Miller opens up a lot of possibilities for you to be flexible with your thinking if you're Brandon Bean and, and Sean McDermott heading into the draft. I think you could be more flexible. Now, it's very, very risky in respects to if he doesn't come back and if he misses the whole year. or if he, We've got to deal with the same thing with Trey White. We're hoping, we're all hoping that he comes back to all pro form. We don't know.